So there's a lot of people in this audience and online who agree with you. But what they're really saying is tomorrow is Sunday, they're going to wake up, and they've got to answer a bunch of questions. So I'm going to ask you 15 points. Um, you might want, to give you a, might want to give you a pen so you could write this down, or I'll remind you. But um, these, I want to get your thoughts on these. You can skip any that you don't, um, that you don't have uh, feedback on. Um, but this is the question. For the, everyone who tomorrow and Sunday wakes up at 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, they are going to, uh, they're going to have to make a decision on a bunch of things. So I just wanted, you know, quick thoughts on uh, what you have to say about these things. Number one, should they get their hair dyed? In other words, there's women, they want to, they're 30, they're 40, they're 50, they have gray hairs, they have to make a decision on hair dye. Number two, a lot of women like to put makeup on. They have to make a decision. They go out socially, and everyone is putting on lipstick and makeup, and they want to know if they should, you know, they want to fit in. Number three, the gardener comes around and says, your lawn's going to die if you don't put chemicals on it. I got to put the chemicals on. Assume it's, you know, May. Number four, they want to clean the kitchen. They have to have cleaning supplies. They want to clean the kitchen. They don't want it to smell. They don't want it to be dirty. And then they also have toilets they have to clean, and they definitely feel like they need something strong in there. Number five, the cell phone's ringing. They want to know if they should you know, pick it up and put it to their head. You know, they've got to know what to do. Number six, they're leaving for the day, so they want to put the cell phone on in the pocket in case their kids call. Number seven, the kid, there's, there's, there's people in the house and everyone wants to use the wireless, so they have the wireless on in the house. Um, number eight, um, it's time to get the flu shot. And, you know, and they have a new baby and they have to make decisions on vaccines. Um, number 10, they got to get a carpet. They want to know if they're concerned about should they, you know, but carpet, they need a carpet in the house, but someone told them that there's chemicals in the carpet. Then they want to paint the inside of the house, but someone said to paint out gases. Then they have, uh, they, they don't feel good. The doctor says take an antibiotic. Then they have, need more furniture in the house, but couches are made with all kinds of foams that could outgas. Then the teenage son says, I want the wireless head buds, because that's all the kids have. I don't want to have wired headphones. I want the wireless head pods. They're fine. They work on Bluetooth. They're fine. Then they go to cook breakfast, and they have pots and pans. And you know, I don't know what's in the pot and pan, what it's made of. And uh, let's start there. <laughs> can I knock a couple out? I'm going to do the lowest hanging fruit. And then you guys can take the tough stuff. So I think if you are somebody who wants to color your hair or wear cosmetics, my favorite, favorite, favorite thing out there is madesafe.org, madesafe.org. And this is an organization that was started by a woman named Amy Ziff, which is verifying that the ingredients in your cosmetics, your hair dye, your shampoo, your soaps, et cetera, are made safe, meaning they're not just like kind of okay, they are edible, that you can put them on your skin and not have any adverse effects. And it's a really rigorous, comprehensive scientific testing program. So I understand that we live in the world that we live in. This is part of our culture to dye our hair and wear makeup and do all the things that Steve just listed. That's our life, I get it. Like I, I, I sometimes when people hear me talk about getting as close to nature as possible, it's like, Everybody pictures going and living in the woods in a hut somewhere and being naked, but that isn't going to work. We have to be in this world, but not be of it. So I think there are shortcuts like finding things like madesafe.org for some of your household personal care products that can help you make better choices that are closer to sort of the natural safer things. So I took the easy one. You yeah, guys? Okay. In addition, to take the, the cleaning. Sure. In addition, uh, there's the Environmental Working Group. So they have a website called um, Skin Skin Deep, Deep right? Dot right. org. And so you can plug in your shampoo, your conditioner, your sunscreen, your makeup, and see how toxic it is uh, on a scale. You know, it goes green to red. So uh, so that would be easy. And also they have them for household cleaners as well. But easy thing to do. Um, yes, household cleaners. Use uh, either the stuff that you find at Trader Joe's or, or Whole Foods, or you could go to the all natural, hydrogen peroxide, um, baking soda, white vinegar. I have recipes in my book for all that, cleaning your oven, and um, 
um, her recipes work. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And and it's really um, it, it sometimes it takes a little more work. Like yeah. for example, you can clean almost any baking pan that's got grease grease on it with baking soda, but you, sometimes you have to let it sit overnight. Yeah. But then in the morning, in, all you you just scrub it, and it it really does work. And you really can use toothpaste to clean your silver. Um, yes. And and there's a number of things uh, that. Beth has been recommending for a long time that actually work. That's true. And I mean, I'm, all wait, the ones I've tried. The, uh, okay, I'm so going to keep it. Makeup, lawn. The lawn? Lawn. Yeah, you go ahead and do the lawn. Right. Okay, this, this is in my yard, there are aphids. Okay? And it's funny, if I take away all my aphids, all my ladybugs don't have anything to eat. Okay? So we keep on taking our um, mentality of the kitchen cleanliness, and you walk outside, and oh my gosh, there's a hole in that leaf. Where's my spray? Because I can't have holes in my leaves. We, we take that perfection, but we don't, we don't understand that in nature, it's a eat and get eaten environment. The plants are there as habitat, they're there as food. The things that eat the plants are eaten by birds. You know, the birds are eaten by something else. It's this huge, big ecological environment that doesn't need um, product on it. It actually works itself out. Okay? So the artificial green, you know, is probably not the real right thing to be putting on your lawn. Small little aside, I had, um, I raise bees across the country and um, when I put a couple hundred of my bees out, I maybe get four or five hundred every year. A couple hundred out, four or five hundred back. Uh, one year, uh, two places, New York and then around me in, in Seattle, um, both places got, instead of four hundred back, got like ten or fifteen back. Well, they both put down um, someone lawn care. You know, it used to be called Chem Lawn. Nowadays, it's called True Green. And all the bees, they didn't die. They just flew someplace else. There's your canary. But it, and the, the canary went up the shaft instead of dying. It just it left. So my tiny little statement is: um, let your yard be its yard. And if it dies, it shouldn't be there in the first place. Okay, I'm not putting cactuses up in Washington, and you're certainly not growing moss down in Arizona. You know, let, let nature do its thing. The city of Toronto passed an ordinance opposing all ornamental pesticides quite some time ago. And I was uh, there in Ontario, actually, they passed it for the province. And you get wonderful dandelions, and you can eat dandelion greens. And they're, they're actually very good for you. They're full of a lot of, of folate and rich vitamins and fiber. Um, so the idea of... Uh, limiting ornamental pesticides is one that really ought to take root, no pun intended, um, with respect to that one. Um, but <clears throat> um, Beth, what's your best recipe for cleaning the kitchen toilet? <laughs> Baking soda and, and vinegar, and I don't remember the proportions to it, yeah. but I wanted to talk about uh, pots and pans because the, the, um, the uh, what is it? St um, st Teflon. <laughs> there you go. Teflon. It has the coating. Perfluorinated the, compounds. Yes, PFOA contains. Now, DuPont, when I wrote my book, DuPont was talking about changing the formula. They said they were going to change it by 2015. That hasn't happened. So um, nonstick, that's what the word I was looking for. Um, choose another um, way of cooking. You know, I figured out a way to not make my eggs stick um, with using coconut oil, just heat it up to a certain degree and then things don't don't stick. So you don't really need the 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 that Teflon coating. So just be aware of that. One of the problems that we have to acknowledge though is that a lot of our solutions cost money. Like there's a La Crusade nonstick pan that works great and doesn't you know use the perfluorinated compounds that are very toxic, but it costs $200 and that's part of the problem is that <clears throat> you have to be able to afford to be healthy. And what I want to, I want to live in a society where you don't have to be rich to be healthy, where it's the normal thing, where we, it should be usual not to have to have uh, pesticides um, that your children will roll around with on the lawn, where your dog is going to get cancer if you use lawn pesticides, which by the way, we, we do know that. You asked Steve about the cell phone and carrying the phone and Wi-Fi, so let me try to answer all of those. I'm not gonna tell you not to use your cell phone. I am gonna tell you to use it less. I am gonna tell you that children should not have cell phones, that it's not a toy, and that schools should not be using them for so-called educational purposes because it really defeats the purpose of education if children start to learn at a young age 
that everything they need to know is in a screen, because it's not. They need to know how to live in the natural world. They need to know how to look you in the eye. They need to know how to find out information. They need to know how to play with other people and understand their feelings. And feelings are not communicated with a screen. We, have a, we live in a world where some children have difficulty confusing their parents with an iPhone. There's a funny story, you can look up I Mama, and it's a story about a child that, that actually would, would see a phone and say, Mama, Mama, because at age <clears throat> nine months to 18 months, the mama was traveling, traveling so much, whenever this baby saw a phone, they would call it Mama, which is a kind of sad commentary on the nature of, of how the young brain can get so captivated by these things. We know about dopamine. We know that sugar, drugs, cocaine, rock and roll, and cell phone radiation all light up the pleasure center of the brain called for dopamine. They all do. And we need to control how our children use these devices so that they don't become so addicted to them as many of us are that they don't learn how to learn properly. So carry your phone on airplane mode or how many of you uh, know that you should never carry it next to your body? You do now, and you're going to know more by tomorrow. So please do come to um, my session at 11, and I'll be happy to share more information and more resources with you. With respect to Wi-Fi, <clears throat> in your home, go wired. It's not that hard. Information on how to go wired can be found on our website. I, we are constantly updating that. There's ways to wire everything that you think you have to have wirelessly. And we have to have a conversation as a society. At last time I looked, which was two years ago, about 90% of the use of the internet was taken up by 10 to 20% of people. And it was dominantly used for movies, games, and pornography. That was about 90% of the internet. Movies, games, and pornography. Now really, the argument is being made that we have so many people with so many devices that we have to increase the capacity and now we need to put up 5G, which I'll talk about tomorrow, which basically puts a refrigerator-sized um, large multiplex antenna, which can have a thousand of the antennas in a box the size of a small refrigerator, 30 feet above right smack in front of your bedroom window, and you can say nothing about where it's located, how much power it, it has. Now. The, the good news is that it doesn't go very far, but the bad news is that it might be right at your bedroom window. And there's a proposal now in the city of Santa Rosa, people are upset about it, to put these up every 200 or so yards with no ability to say no to it. And I think that we, that's why we need more people to be informed about this issue, because it's outrageous. It's outrageous to think that we're gonna take a technology that has never been shown to be safe, assume it's safe, and expose people to it, and then wait for the data uh, to emerge. So I think precautions and you going wired is important so that we reduce the demand that we have now for this growing demand for Wi-Fi. As to carpeting, I think you both have written about this as well. New carpet can contain a lot of nasty things. So Bare wood floors are, are nice. If you need to have carpeting, go with more natural materials. They last long, they can be cleaned more easily. For paint, low VOC paints are now widely available. Um, for antibiotics, I don't know if anyone else here addresses that, but you can get a lot of antibiotic action out of things like grapefruit seed, extract, and oil of oregano, two of the most potent antibacterial, antiviral agents ever known. Oil of oregano, and grapefruit seed extract. They have been demonstrated in laboratories to kill lots of bad stuff, both viruses, uh, fungi, as well as bacteria. And they are used in primitive cultures as antibiotics. You're clapping for, yes, the natural antibiotics. And naturopaths will tell you how to use these. Uh, they don't taste great. So for little children, you have to put it in something that is, is sweeter for them, and you can sweeten with, ste with stevia. And the, yeah, the capsules, if you can swallow capsules, that's fine. But I'm thinking for, ch for children, it's kind of hard. Wireless headbuds, give me a break. Do you really think that because your child wants to have a microwave,
device inside their brain, you're going to have to give in to that? So what if it's Bluetooth? Bluetooth is better than not. And I'll tell you, it's okay for short periods of time. But the new ones, which are intended to be worn all the time, first of all, they're going to be lost. They cost a fortune. You know, everybody loses things like that. I cannot recommend it. None of my expert advisors recommend it. And we're very concerned about what it might mean over the long term. And it's, it's one step from that to implanting these things in our bodies. And there are people who are ready to do it. Put it in their tooth, for example. You can do it. You can do this, all right? Should you do this? No. Any other comments on any of those? Or? Um, well, while we're on it, um, what about just sitting in front of a computer or sitting in front of a TV? Are those, does that have any issue with radiation or anything? Well, sitting, as you know, is, not the, is, is the problem, right? People, we, sitting has been identified as a, as, as a contributing factor for many diseases, many of the ones that we talk about. Um, the answer is it depends. It depends entirely on what you're being exposed to. And I don't have enough information. By the way, Steve, I don't really think it should be my job to know whether it's safe or not. You know, I really think that that is where the government and the private sector have got to do a better job. They ought to be able to issue information. You ought to be able to find out how much radiation comes out of your phone under normal use. And guess what? I'm going to show you tomorrow something shocking. The French government actually has a whole agency that does nothing but test phones. And they test radiation. And guess what they do? They actually test it on the body. Guess what? All our American phones and all of the world's six billion phones are tested in a phony system just like the flaw that we had in the diesel engine exhaust testing. You know that one? Where the diesel engine was programmed to emit less fuel uh, toxic agents when it was hooked up to a computer. That scandal was called Dieselgate in, in Europe, okay? That scandal we now have in France called Phonegate because what they showed is when phones are tested the way they're used next to the body, they emit between two to 10 times more radiation than the current limits allow. Two to 10 times more, and I'm gonna show you the data tomorrow. And because of that, we are living in a world where we have phones tested in the United States. You don't all know this because why would you bother to know? They're tested in a holster. When was the last time you saw anybody under 70 not using a holster for their phone? All right? That's how they're tested. They're tested with a test that uses 30-year-old science and is 20 years old. It, they're not tested for children. They're not tested for babies. They're not tested for pregnant women. They're never tested for their effect on bees, by the way. And the whole test system is a scandal. It is an outrage. And if more people understood that, which is why you're going to come to my talk tomorrow, more people would take action to say, look, tell me. Don't make me have to go, as I will show you, six steps into my phone to find out how safe it is to use it and test the phones the way they're used. That's what we need. I have a question for you, Deborah. I read that in China that they are now uh, requiring pregnant women to wear EMF shields in front of their laptops and computers. And then I also um, read that in France they were removing Wi-Fi from the schools. Can you speak to either? Both of those things are true, and thank you for raising them. But it's been for a long time, I think more than 10 years, Asian women, not just China, but in, in other Asian countries, at the moment they know they're pregnant, and because they used to monitor pregnancy for all working women, because they controlled it, wear a smock. And by the way, if you go to the Sears uh, website, yes, that's Sears, the company, S-E-A-R-S, you can find a pregnancy smock. And you, there's a way, website, I think, called um, Belly Armor. Belly Armor, and they sell uh, protective clothing as well. Um, and their biggest sales are in Asia, where it's standard practice for a pregnant woman to have a smock. Now, I can't tell you if those smocks really work, but I think that because they have metal in the fabric, they're going to protect immediately, but I don't know what it means if you, for example, had a smock on, you're holding a two-year-old, 
I'm not sure that's a great thing because the radiation is going to come off of you and maybe go back out to, to the uh, toddler. But that's certainly true. Also, there's a company called Huawei, H-U-A-W-E-I in China, and they made something called a baby safe router, a baby safe router. And that router um, was called baby safe and created a huge uproar in the industry. What did it mean? It meant the router automatically went to sleep when it wasn't being used and woke up only when it needed to be used and used the lowest power possible. Now all of our routers should be baby safe. We don't need routers to be on 24 seven and now you have to turn it off if you want it off. But that's ridiculous. You ought to be able to get them down and turn them off and frankly, you ought to go wired, which is not that hard. You can get your router, which comes from your cable in your house and there is an ethernet connection on it and you plug your ethernet connection in and most of the router boxes have at least four of them and then you can get an ethernet hub which will give you another four and you can connect with wires and yes, it does mean wires but it's a lot safer and guess what else? It's faster and guess what else? It's more secure. Camilla Reese's organization just issued a huge report on why we should have corded landlines around the country and yet the, we are embarked on a policy led by the FCC to get rid of all landlines. We won't be able to get a corded landline. That's going to be a huge national emergency when the next hurricane hits and the next power goes out and we have no ability to communicate because we built the whole system to rely on wireless and it won't work. I just wanted to add about the laptop. Um, when I measure, I notice that if, if the, um, if the Bluetooth is on, the fields are much higher. So if you don't need your Bluetooth on the computer, turn it off and then the fields will drop. And try not to put the laptop on your lap. I mean, it's just not a good thing. I mean, I'm sensitive to it. I can feel the buzzing, so. It's called a tablet because it belongs on a table. Okay. It's called a tablet because it belongs on a table and it's tested, most of them are tested at 20 centimeters, that's eight inches, from an adult male body. A big, tall, heavy guy, 28 inches away. So think about all these little children sitting with their iPads over their reproductive organs. It's terrible, it's a form of child abuse. And people don't know, they don't know. So that's why you all now have a job to do, to save the children and your grandchildren. There's no question in the audience. Then. We'll do that later. We're, we're, no. No, 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 no questions right now, please. I, I just want to add something to what you said about hardwiring. Be aware that many of the cable companies, if you are going to hard, hardwire your house, that many cable companies are now shipping modems that um, have a, a 2.4 gigahertz um, network and a 5 gigahertz network. And the 5 gigahertz, gigahertz network is meant to be a public hotspot. So the goal is for them all to connect so that you can walk anywhere with your phone or your tablet or whatever and never be out of Wi-Fi range because every home in America has a public hotspot. You don't even know about it because they don't tell you. They just, tell, they just send you the new. The hotspot is basically means that anybody walking by your house or your apartment or whatever can hook to your internet, to your Wi-Fi network. It's meant to be public and yours is meant to be private. Yours is a 2.4, but it's five gigahertz. So it's got a much stronger signal. So um, even if you hardwire, like Deborah mentioned, which you, is, she's right, it's very easy to do, you still have to call the company and say, shut off my 2.4 and five gigahertz networks, please, because they have a public one installed automatically. This is not every cable company, but it's one of these things that they roll out and they don't tell you about. So you just have to be aware for that.